I'm going to embarrass myself just a little bit here today. It seems appropriate. Do you see this t-shirt? All tattered and worn and so small. This was my favorite t-shirt growing up. I wore this thing every day because I thought this was me right here in the middle. It's the only reason. But it wasn't until years later that I actually read what was written around the border. It says, the power of a girl is to change the world. I'm going to say that again. The power of a girl is to change the world. You see, I was raised by a feminist mother and a father who wanted to raise a strong, independent woman. I was raised in this rural community where we uphold and honor women for their education as well as their creative endeavors. Hell, you can't even walk down the street here without seeing one of those little goddess symbols on somebody's something rather or Prius. <laughs> <laughs> but I never knew that my gender would affect my opportunities or my career choice or even my passion at certain points in my life. Here today, I'm going to talk about three easy ways that we can affect direct change within gender discrimination on the opposite side of the camera within the film world. I'm going to talk about how we could change this conversation for girls to come in our local community. You see, I dare say that everybody in this room knows that gender discrimination exists, right? I dare say even further that everybody in this room knows that gender discrimination exists within film. You hear actresses speaking out all the time over over-sexualization of roles, underpayment, lack of representation. But you rarely ever hear what it's like for a woman trying to break into the opposite side of the camera. I'm going to tell you a quick story here. My first introduction to the boys only club. If you know what the boys only club is, it's essentially a group of males in the artist world or within film and media that pretty much block any girl from advancing in their career field or choice. It doesn't matter how professional you can be or what you create or how good you are at that conversation. There's a lack of opportunity because of that boys club. It was my first day of college, my first hour, my first class, Filmmaking 101. Me being a self-described nerd showed up 45 minutes early. I sat in the back of the class. I was so excited to talk film. And as classmates started trickling in and the professor started setting up, I noticed that I was only one of two women in a class of 30. Now, later to my horror, I found out that I was one of 12 in my entire cinematic arts department at the City College of San Francisco. You would think that San Francisco would be a little bit more diverse than that, but here we are, the boys club exists. How do we fix this? How do we encourage and empower women to tell their perspectives, to share their stories? And it comes down to three basic points. The first is going to be, get ready for it. Are you ready? Advocation. To advocate. I know everybody always says advocation is one point. But hear me out here. In order for a young girl to have a platform to stand upon, the platform needs to exist. If you're young and struggling to try to find your voice and your passion, a lot of the times you're not thinking about how to get that story to audiences, how to tell your perspective. And as a community, we can gather and advocate for those young girls to build a platform and a stage for them to stand upon. Okay, there's not a lot of funding in arts, right? How do we change that? Well, when I was growing up, and this might date me just a little bit here, our community was on the precipice of changing the idea of STEM, or science, technology, engineering, and math. We noticed as a whole that we didn't have a lot of girls who are interested in STEM, let alone excited or wanting to go into those fields. And so we took that, we molded it, and we created after-school programs, weekend workshops. Even our two local colleges decided to host girl-only events, but nothing like that exists for film. Nothing like that exists for media literacy. I propose that we change that, that we start offering those perspectives, those stories, those weekend workshops, those inclusive environments for girls to speak their mind and tell their side. Once again, funding, right? I mentioned that a little bit earlier. How do we change that if we don't have a lot of money? Well, film actually started out simple. 
It started out with a pen and a piece of paper. It started out storyboarding. It started out with flip books. It started out learning about costume design. It started out learning about set design. And those are all things that we could teach without expensive cameras and film equipment and lighting, just to give them a little bit more of a platform to stand upon. My second point here today is transparency. In order to fix a problem as a community, as you, we have to realize there is a problem. <laughs> Being transparent with one another about this issue and understanding that we do need to advocate on behalf of those girls is something that we need to talk about. We need to get this point across. A way you can easily do that is by influencing a girl within your life and seeing if she's interested in media or in film. Okay, but how do I do that if I don't have a camera? How do I teach this person if I'm not a filmmaker? Well, empowerment through learning as you go is just as important as doing it in the first place. And we all have one thing in our pockets right now where award-winning Sundance films have been shot on, and that's your cell phone. Teaching a girl how to use the tools that are built around her and using those things to tell their perspective and story is so empowering and it's great. My third point here today is something called the 50% rule. And the 50% rule is well known within the media and film world, but I'm not sure if you guys know what it is. The 50% rule essentially talks about how if we don't change this Hollywood gender discrimination platform today, we are losing 50% of the voices and stories that could be told. 50% of the films that are about women or talk about women topics aren't actually from a woman's perspective. 50% of the audiences that are watching those films don't have a basis to latch on to. In order to change that <laughs> directly within our community, you have to combine the previous statements I said. You have to talk about transparency and fix and advocate on behalf of those stories and voices. That 50% is an obscene number if you really look at it and think about it. That's literally half of the people in this room won't ever have a voice within the film and media world. Some things that were told to me in my professional and also my education career, just to highlight this before I leave here today, is phrases such as, you can't touch those light stands, you're too weak to carry them. My other one was, I was producing a short film, and you're the producer. I thought only men were. This is gonna definitely be interesting. My final, final statement I wanna tell you today, is about a script I was writing on sexual assault, a very personal topic to myself. And when reading the script out loud in a workshop, I was met with, we don't need another woman's sob story. That one still gets me. <laughs> So in order to change, in order to actually change, we have to say this phrase. The power of a girl is to change the world. Say it with me just one more time. The power of a girl is to change the world. The power and the voice that's within every girl that they carry with them every single day can change the world of media and film for the future to come. It's time to film out loud. Thank you.